Let's start by reading the problem. Number 12. The prime factorization of a natural number n can be written as n equals p r squared, where p and r are distinct prime numbers. How many factors does n have, including 1 in itself? And then it gives us, gives us its answer choices at 3, 4, 5, and 6. When I look at this problem and I read it over, sometimes you always want to always want to get in the habit of reading over it twice. Some things stick out. Prime factorization. Natural number. Distinct prime. And and let alone let's just focus on prime there for a moment. Factors. Wow. It's got a this problem here has a lot of math vocabulary. You gotta understand all this math vocabulary before we begin. So let's just Pull it apart. Look at this is one way to study. Go through your test, pull out the math vocabulary, make flashcards, and then you go back and, and, and work through the problems. But if I had 12 and I wanted to do the prime factorization of 12, that's like breaking 12 up into its prime factors. So what two numbers multiply to get to 12? You might say 2 times 6. Well, 2 is prime, so I leave it at that. What two numbers multiply to get to 6? 2 and 3. So I could rewrite 12. How many distinct prime numbers does it have? What does that mean? Distinct is another way of saying different. So this one has two different prime numbers. It has 2, 2, 2, so I would say 2 to the second. And it has th 1, 3, so I'd just say 3 to the first. So let me clarify that for a moment. When I broke this up to its prime factorization, I found out that I identified 2, a 2, and a 3 in it. But because there's only two distinct prime numbers, the 2 and the 3, I just write the 2 and the 3 out. When I want to um, say that there's two 2's, I do 2 to the second times 3 to the first. That's the same as me going 2 times 2 times 3. Okay, this right here is, prime, is 12 written in prime factorization form, and these are the two distinct prime numbers. Great. So we talked about prime factorization, talked about natural number, and we, we introduced prime, uh, distinct prime numbers. By the way, a prime number, let's just clarify, t 2, 3, 5, 6, oops, oh, sorry, not 6, 7, uh, 11, these are all prime numbers. A prime number is a number which has two factors. It has one in itself. So a factor is a number that goes into another number evenly. 1 goes into 2, and 2 goes into 2, so 2 only has 2 factors. For 3, 1 goes into 3 evenly, and 3 goes into 3 evenly, with no remainder. Okay, awesome. Same with 5, same with 7. We could do this for 11. What are the numbers that go into 11 evenly? 1 and 11. So the definition of a prime number is a number that is divisible by 2 factors, 1 in itself. Is 1 prime? Well, it's divisible by 1, and it's divisible by itself. It fits the rule, right? No. But that's double dipping. That's like, that's like going to a party and, and taking a nacho and dipping it in the dip, biting the chip, and then dipping it again. You can't do that. So 1 is not prime. We'll just consider 1, a, for right now, a, just a regular number, a natural number, um, or a whole number, or an integer, but it's not prime. All right? All right. So... We are given prime number, or natural number. We don't know what this natural number is. And we're told it's made up of these two distinct prime numbers. I don't know what they are. One of them is squared. By the way, if it doesn't tell you what uh, exponent it is, assume that it's 1. It's an implied 1. So I have p to the first times r to the second. I don't know what they are. And I'm supposed to find out what this natural number is so that I can figure out how many factors are in it. By the way, we'll get to what factors are in a moment. I think the fastest way to do this problem is just to substitute in two different prime numbers. So in this case right here, what if we said, hypothetically, what if we said p was 2? And what if we said r, our second distinct prime number, was 3? What would the natural number be? Again, this is, I think, the fastest way to solve this problem. Well, that's the same as me doing 2 times 3 times 3. That would get me 18 as my natural number. 
Okay, so if that was the case, how many uh, factors are in 18? This is when we do the upside down rainbow method. 1 goes into 18, and 18 goes into 18. Awesome. 2 goes into 18 with no, rem uh, with no remainder, and six, uh, 9 goes into 18. 3 goes into 18, and 6 goes into 18. So 18 has 12, I'm sorry, 18 has 6 factors. So if we, if we use the rules, if they, we use the framework that they gave us, p to the first times r to the second, that would be like 2 to the first times 3 to the second, it would get us a natural number that has 6 factors. The answer would be d. But you know what, maybe you're saying, hey Chris, <laughs> that was just by luck. Well, let's try it again. Think of two distinct prime numbers. How about, how about if we just, you know, um, how about we just put the two here for now? By the way, I remember I said before, always keep the lowest prime number first. Well, you got to do that. But let's say hypothetically you did that. Three to the first times two to the second. Or, you know, we could, or we could just, we could do it the correct way. We could just uh, switch the P and the R. So anyway, we will do two to the second times three to the first. That will get us the same number. We're going to get a natural number of 12, because 2 times 2 is 4, times 3 is 12. What are the factors of 12? Well, they're using the upside-down rainbow method. Because the upside-down rainbow method, when I do it, just makes me so happy. 2 times 1 times, uh, 1, goes into t 1 goes into 12 12 times, 12 goes into one, 12 1 time, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. Hey, it, it still has 6 factors. And we could do this over and over again, and we're always going to get six factors. Factors. Why is this? It's a pattern in number theory. So that is one way you could get to the correct answer. Here's a second way, and I'm going to do it real quick. If you're given a natural number, and it's written in prime factorization form, it doesn't matter what those values are. All you need to do, all you need to do, if this was 12, doesn't matter, or sorry, this was 18. I take that natural number, I write in its prime factorization form, so that would be uh, 2 to the first times 3 to the second. This is great, but once I have this value, I look to the exponents, the 1 and the 2. What am I going to do with the exponents? You're going to add 1 to each one of these exponents. Add 1 to each one of these exponents. What does that do? Well, this becomes a 2, and this becomes a 3. You multiply out th those two numbers, and you get 6. So this natural number, if it's something to the first and something to the second, and I add one to each one of those exponents, then I multiply them, it gets me six. So I know this natural number has six factors. But wait a second, you're saying, Chris, how is that possible? Well, and why would I even think about using it? You would use it in a number that is so big that there's no way you would do an upside down rainbow. For example, let's say the natural number was 540. And they said, hey, how many factors in 540? And you'd be like, oh, darn. I don't know. Well, first I want you to find out how many distinct prime numbers are. What's the, what's the prime factorization of it? So you'd be like 54 times 10, and then you break up the 54 into uh, 6 times 9, and this one would be uh, 2 times uh, 5, and then you'd be like the 6 is made up of 2 times 3, and the 9 is made up of, you know, 3 times 3. So how, what are the distinct prime numbers? I got three distinct prime numbers. Okay, I'm going real fast. What are they? Two, three, five. Great. Now I identified the how many twos. I got two twos. I got one, two, three, three threes. And I got one five. Okay, great. What do I do? Well, I go to the exponents, because that's all we're interested in. I add one to each one. This is only a, a one five. <clears throat> so that would make this a two. Anyways, this would be a three. This would be a 4, and this would be a 2. If I multiply that out, um, and I if I did it correctly, this would be 12 times 2 is 24. 540 has 24 factors. That is why you would use, that's where you would use this strategy for larger numbers.